Uh, mid afternoon, I think it's perfect time to say mid afternoon. This is on the 8th and 20th of February. No, it's not. On the 8th of February 2020. Uh, there are too many twos and zeros on my uh, little computer dashboard there. So it says 08022020. Lots of zeros, lots of twos. And I hope we're all doing well, all of us. Again, I'm going to say the show, all three of us. Um, because it's been a really beautiful day, and I've been in the library, I've been at school. It's really, 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 really tragic. It's just a clear thing. It's one minute. Ah, sorry. Uh, one minute. I'm going to record this podcast. I'm going to go for a lovely, lovely, lovely podcast. Uh, sorry about that, Al. I, I've got this weird sensitive spot within my right ear, and I cracked my earphone, and it kind of uh, probed that sensitive spot. Uh, and so now in my right ear. Um, no fun, no fun there. Um, well, maybe a little fun. That's something called masochism, where you like pain. It's almost like a sexual thing for you, I don't know. Um, I don't think I, 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 that wasn't arousing for me. Now. Pain. Um, but it's a great Saturday nonetheless. Um, you've all got a, lot of, a lovely 15 minutes. Have fun. Oh, on Wednesday, me and my dear friend Narlin were marshalling a, 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 a cross country run. So we stood in a corner of a field for two hours, clapping people along. Um, that was really fun because he had. We both got, you know, you get a school pack lunches, so it's a baguette and it's filled with tuna, and the tuna's kind of rubbish. And it's got weight that much, it's really, 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 really free. Um, and you clap, and people kind of walk on by and some of them are sort of tired, some of them are really fast, some of them are terrifying, fast. Um, and some of them are really fast, some of them are terrifying, some of them are really fast, some of them are terrifying, fast, because they were like my age group, and that always makes you feel a little bit odd when you see someone your age, like, run 5k and really does not be effective. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I was starting to fatigue from clapping, uh, and I was cold, so I was definitely one of the weaker 17-year-olds within that field. And it was really good fun, um, and a good friend of mine who I've known all my life plays very, very well. She's really good at running. I, I can't, I really cannot get my head around people who just run, just non-stop. Well, obviously they have to stop. They just really, 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 really run. Their legs just keep running. I don't know, do legs run or does a person run? I think legs run, well, legs move to produce running, but I, don't, I wouldn't say legs run. Because if you only have legs, you can run. So they have to be attached to the foot. I don't know, what, what, what do you need to be able to run? Maybe, maybe if you just have legs, torso, feet, or, you know, and a bi, bio, or bionicle counterpart. And what I mean there is, okay, yeah, sure, maybe if you have like a, I'm considering a, 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 a bionic leg to be a leg here. Yeah, I, th- I think that this, this, this train of thought is not that um, lucrative in any context, let alone now. I'm going to light a candle. Because there's a candle over there and it's looking at me. I've written a poem about candles. Oh, I'm so sorry. Ugh, man. I mean, I don't like it when you light a candle and you're in the euphoria of that kind of that hiss and kind of. Uh, um, cough sound of the light, of the candle lighting. But then, due to the, uh, hissing, what that actually is is all the chemicals in the end of the match being combusting. So now you've got loads of chemicals in the air. Could you smile? Maybe, maybe, maybe because you're happy or could you the sound you breathe in. You've got loads of chemicals in your brain. You cough, you cough back at it. Cough back at the candle that's coughing. Oh, it's really nice noise. I don't know if anyone can hear that. I'm just, I've got this candle still lit and I'm just looking at it. Uh, pyro, I, think I, I think I'm slightly pyromaniac. I have pyro, pyromaniac tendencies. I will. Hmm. Ow, so I have. Um, I've got tendencies where I like fire. I always like fire. So this is fun. I, I used to grow up and I used to go to my grandparents' house and I used to like fires. And bonfires. Okay, so now we're going to do a little line. I mean, my, I think I've written three lines this week. That's what happened myself. Um, so the first, uh, I don't want to call them zesty testies, a bit embarrassing. Um, my first little thought of the day. Shall we go? A thought of the podcast. Um, oh, here we are. 
says, another way, on the topic of being stressed, another way to get over nerves is to uh, be skin. As in, skin covers your neuro, your neuron system, therefore, if you want to get over nerves, you should be skin. Pretty crap. Um, but, so, that, that, that's the fun of, of it. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit tired today. I really need to go for a walk after this. Um, what else can I, uh, be exaggerating with? I'm just going to be honest. This is all just me practicing talking and trying to be able to have free flowing thoughts and trying to be able to articulate them in a slightly human manner. Well, obviously, you have your off day. That's okay. And, you know, you're, you're haunted by the, the revision timetable you have over your head. That's what I have right now. It's not over my head, it's beside my head. So, uh, according to the revision timetable, today, on Saturday, I should be doing two hours of physics and 30 minutes of freestyle. Um, I guess freestyle is me trying to be all quirky and trying to make revising whatever I want here exciting. I've been reading some really good books at the moment, actually. Really enjoying them. I finished um, a James Baldwin book called Another Country, which was really amazing. It gave me a lot of insight into nineteen fifties and how relationships were. And it, you know, it was before like technologies and the people had home phones, but I mean, I mean the book's all about cheat, not cheating, about love and um, people cheating with each other a lot, and just like kind of like, hey, people could cheat, just they could do it. They left their house, they cheated, and they came back. I guess. Before, you know what it is, people seem so free that they could do it. Like, they, they had less, um, people kind of observing them. Well, not necessarily people, but I think subconsciously, by having, um, social media, we do feel a little bit more watched and even like, not even like, oh, well, obviously you post a picture, people look at pictures, so you're being observed. But I mean, I think subconsciously it's in our mind, we feel more just, even if we have nothing on our post. Maybe because it causes society to analyze each other a bit more because we've seen their pictures and then we analyze them we like to try and compare the pictures. So everyone, even people who don't have social media, end up being a bit more judged based on it. To be entirely wrong. Probably is entirely wrong. Um, I was thinking earlier as well that um, it's all a bit, you know, I, I, there's a bit of a bit hypocrisy, a bit of an irony in uh, people, you know, people who, um, will say, oh, you know, society is rubbed, like, people, uh, society is really bad, and there's a lot of racism, or society, people are very nasty in society, and I think we, we, we treat each other very badly, um, and those tech people will depend on the society's acceptance, for example, you know, wear certain things, say certain things, behave in a particular way, and not necessarily in accordance with their values, but in accordance with other, what they want other people to see in them. And I think that's a bit of a contradiction there because you're, you're saying you're, in your mind you think people are not so rational and you think that the society around you is not of um, kind or balanced people yet you want their, you want them to think a certain way of you. Which in my head, if, if I thought someone was a bit stupid, then I probably wouldn't try and impress them. <laughs> I think I find it kind of contradictory. Um, but I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think I find myself to be too so much, but I don't really mind. I kind of do my own thing. I find, I, I find, I think it's all quite fun to say. Thanks. You can know, I may consider myself to be a little bit apart from it, but it's not possible. You can't really be apart from society. It's mostly impossible. Even, even the man who's never been to a city, he is characterized by the fact that he's never been to a city, therefore he's characterized by the lack of um, social environment is being, but you can never really escape society. I don't think. Really. And that's kind of funny. And then maybe even, uh, I guess the man who doesn't know he exists, maybe he has escaped, escaped society. And then there's all these interesting ideas of what kind of ethics a man or woman, so I should be saying, or turkey dog or transsexual, whatever. Um, transgender? Trans transsexual? I don't know what transsexual is. I can check, like, uh, basically. You can be whatever you are, you can not be part of society. I wonder what kind of ethics you would have then if you never been in a environment. Let's say, I mean, they must have tested this, but let's say you, uh, you kick a man's, kick a woman out 
into just like, like into the woods or you put it on another planet. Oh, actually, I wonder if they'll do this in the future with um AI. So we'll be able to simulate human interaction. Let's say we can uh, simulate it perfectly, which of course in itself is kind of mind blowing because then if we simulate it perfectly, if we created something and we simulated it perfectly, then surely we just created like an equivalent. So therefore, which is the real one? You can't say which one's real. Really perfectly when you make the one. Oh dear, that'd be really bad. I can't do that. Man, that'd be really... God, oh man, I can't do that. Anyway, in my theoretical world of the, of the Jolly Men podcast, say we've done such a thing, um, I'd be curious how the ethics and, and morals um, would be born onto this uh, person who is not in touch with people. Maybe they... Like, how would they feel about killing animals? But then I guess you don't really have much of um, you're not bouncing off other people's view. I think what well, you're going to be judging, you're going to be judging the way the tree, like, oh, look, he's started to it, maybe that's been the got fascist ideology. Um, we're going to do another little line here. Talking of lines, oh, I, you know, I sound like a, a, a cocaine person, I say that, you know, but we're going to do another little line here. Uh, of course, I'm actually just reading off a uh, my book that I've written. So, you'll see why I made that little cocaine quip, uh, cocaine induced quip. Okay, uh, I read between lines like a coke up librarian. I think that's quite an enjoyable little thought. You know, that kind of thing that makes you smile, makes me smile. You know, just imagining a librarian having some of that, what's it called? Rich man's drug between the uh, excerpts of Charles Dickens. Great expectation. Seen it on my own. I mean, I quite like uh, a family, uh, well, I don't know how you uh, categorize it. Like, before 1950s, like, literature from countries that aren't England or African continents or like, just like in France, France, Germany, Austria, like that kind of literature, literature. So you have that Kafka, and I really enjoy reading that stuff. I haven't actually read any Kafka yet, but I've read Kafka. Pesce, Herman Pesce, really enjoyed those. Um, they'd be really good fun. And obviously, I had to just to say earlier that I read James Baldwin, but he's in America. I, I did enjoy. It. I found. I guess it's quite an interesting thing where I, when I when I read James Baldwin, I enjoyed it, but I, uh, it, it I, I maybe I don't like reading books about love or about even such. Where I really, I, don't know, I think I really enjoy it. I'm not sure. I did really enjoy it. I just don't quite like it in the same way I really like stretching the I walked four books this morning. Oh dear, my dad gave me six last week. That's ten in the last week. One came in the post earlier from my grandfather. That's eleven in the last week. And I've read one book in the last week. So if we continue, the my rate of change of books will be uh, eleven per week. So we uh, definitely, certainly, certainly, certainly need to out of the end. Well, of course, you know, there's no way to put it not in, in, in a check, uh, book period you know, with, a, with, with my uh, differential of book. Uh, my differential of book with respect to time, aka rate of change of book, um, being at peak. So, therefore, I would be intaking many more books than I would otherwise. Uh, my friend Narlin has briefly met to me because I wish to attend his um, humble abode to get a haircut. And, uh, let me see what he says. Because my head, my yeah, I've got a shaved head, like a like a, a buzz cut, and it grows out and it looks stupid. Um, so I need to get uh, you know mowed down after a week. Week. Oh, this candle smells nice. So let me read you this candle. Also, I posted a um a food review earlier, which I found quite funny. That'll be on my Instagram. It's a, a pickled beetroot food review. Let me just And if you just want to know what it is, I'll see. Fresh plus marine of floor, sea salt mm. Exhilarating scent for the sea with notes of lusty lime, a wave of melon, and fresh water marine. Oh, so it's in the bottom. What is it? Okay. Let me read the bottom. Um, no one wants to know what's in the bottom of the fucking candle. Alfie, come on, man. It's alright, your podcast business. You've got to be better than that. Better than that. 
find it so impressive having people like Bill Burr can just sit down and be funny for an hour and mind them. Like a lot of pre comedians or peak podcasters rely on like guests and like all these like uh, all these kind of oh yeah we'll do this segment where we do this but I mean fucking give it to just sit there and crack up is insane to me. So I feel both on the mic. Well, I just um I don't know what he is to me. He's like a uh, figurehead. Something he 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 uh he he he, he, he produces what I. Enjoy, so that's why I kind of want to do that myself. I don't know. He's a cool guy. Anyway, he might not be, probably a bit whack. Um, in real life. Anyway, everyone, thank you for listening. Love you all, and I will be back next week. Maybe I'll, I might have more exciting week. Uh, love you all. Goodbye.